Srimad Bhagavatam 1, 1, 2. All the philosophies on earth that are celebrated as Dharma are utterly deceptive. So this 1, 1, 2 is Dharma Projita Kaitavatra, Parama Nirmat Sharanam Shatam. This is in the second verse of the first canto. And it's exclaiming, in, this is the Mangalacharya by Vyasadeva. And he's explaining, first of all, that first verse, Janmadi Asya Yata Nibrat, that first beautiful verse of the Bhagavatam, explaining the Gayatri Mantra, Satyam Paramadi Mahi. And then the second verse is explaining that there is no deception whatsoever in this Bhagavatam. And it's, <clears throat> of course, anyone can say that, but when it's said in such a, by a person like Vyasadeva, who everyone understands is a Shakti Vesh avatar, <clears throat> then people accept it and they will listen to that. And then the content begins to unfold in such a glorious way. In that first chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, in verse 11, I want to read it to you because it's so beautiful. It's not a distraction from our topic, but it's it's very much puts us in, um, what do you call, uh, context. The sages are asking how to be happy in this world. Yeyatma suprasidati. And let me read the verse because it's beautiful. Is anyone on the Jaivadharma app? You are, and you are. You're on our Jaivadharma app, our thread. Can you text them and tell them that we've had a storm? Oh, you're doing that. Okay, okay. Do on your phone, quickly. They're all texting me. Just say that there's been a storm, so there's no power, so we'll give the video later. Okay? So... This very beautiful verse, I even want to sing it. Burani buri karmani shrutayani vibhagasaha Atasadotra yatsaram samudritya manisya Buri bridraya bhutanam yeyatma yenatma supersedati So this yenatma supersedati is going to be explained in the next chapter. Supersedity means satisfaction. Where can a man in this degenerate Kali Yuga find satisfaction? Listen to the translation, it's beautiful. There are many varieties of scriptures and in all of them there are many prescribed duties which can be learned only after many years of study in their various divisions. Therefore, O sage, talking to Sutta Goswami. Please select the essence of all these scriptures and explain it for the good of all living beings, that by which instruction their hearts may be fully satisfied. should be followed in an uninterrupted and an unmotivated way, very specifically. Don't use this Dharma for material motivation and don't keep interrupting your practice, we've talked about this, this regularity of practice is what will give the result. Every time, if for weeks and months you're dedicated to chanting a higher quantity or quality of Nam, you will absolutely reap the benefit, 100 million percent. And then in that second chapter, Yeyatma supersedity is again mentioned that this will satisfy the soul. So we talked yesterday about Nam being practically in every chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam. And it's a fact. In every chapter of Bhagavatam, Hari Nam is there. And the same in Jaiva Dharma. It'll be mentioned today. That mm -hmm. this what is the meaning of Adokshaja? Adokshaja, this means the... Um, uh, where is it? Just let me get it. This means the unsurpassed, the um, dic dictionary here is that unto transcend 
transcendence. At Hoxha, that supreme Lord, who is transcendence himself, at Hoxha, this is the verse: Yato Bhakti, devotion Bhakti to that at Hoxha. Like for example, Damodar means one who is tied to the. Uh, yes, at Hoxha. At Hoxha, what is that? Mean? Etymology, you mean? Huh. Mm. At Hoxha, I don't know what the etymology is. But it means transcendence. It means that transcendental Lord. Write it down, and you can do your homework and tell me tomorrow. What is the etymology? And you answer that question yourself. Okay. At Hoxha, actually, I'll probably remember it after a little while. It's not so big. Okay. So this is where Bhakti Vinod Thakur is quoting from in this very first. Um, verse of his Foul Shruti. He's quoting from this. Um, he says, "I'll just read it again. You can read it, Doko. First verse." As indicated in Shrimad Bhagavatam, first canto, first chapter, second shloka. All the philosophies on the earth that are celebrated as dharm are utterly deceptive. They're not going to bring this yenatma supersedity. They're not going to bring satisfaction of the atma. There's the atma, which is internal, and there's the external um, uh, world that we operate in when we are covered by Krishna's external energy. And if we look for peace and uh, security, etc., in that world, we will always be disappointed. So all these dharmas have to be rejected because they're all anything about the material world is going to be deceptive. Understand the core of it because it's temporary. We have to follow it because we have bodies, so we have to do our various material activities, etc. We have to live in this world. You know, we're not going to just dis disregard the world. That's not the dharma of the, the the soul has to maintain his life in his body. It's sinful if you try and take your own life. That's completely sinful. So we have to use our God-given intelligence to make a situation. But as I said yesterday and the day before and the day, be I mean, it's the constant message here. Just keep it to its minimum. Keep whatever it is that you need, and for the bulk of our time, try to focus on this nitya dharma, not the naimitic dharma, because it won't give us any success ultimately. Chale dharma chale kara satya dharma mati chatur vargya tyaji dara nitya prema gati. One should completely abandon such deceptive dharmas and observe his mind in true dharma. In other words, one should give up the fourfold goals of material life. These are the fourfold goals. Most people in the world, if they're in temples even, or if they're following some religious path, certainly in India, they all say the same thing. No. Dharma, Artha, Karana, Mok. They all say this. But that's actually, they're referring to the material world, not the spiritual. The Prem is the fifth Purusartha. That is the fifth Understanding. <clears throat> Go ahead. And as far as solely for the ultimate des destination of nitya pre. This is our. This is Bhakti Vinod Thakur's deep intention that we, listening to this Jiva Dharma, will be inspired to take the path of prem for the rest of our lives. If we do that, our life will be successful. And if we don't do that, there can't be success. For this birth. Amitva mimamsa brahme nija jata buddhi nirvishesha brahma gyan nahi chida shuddhi. Those who are deluded identify themselves with matter. Mm. Very simple. If we are identifying ourselves with the material body, then we're identifying ourselves with matter. My reputation, what do other people think of me? You know, how should I behave in society? All these social things. We are accustomed to them. We learn them from a very early age, five or six years old. 
actually learning those, um, we can almost say, um, like it's like a suit of armor you have to wear to keep your soul from being pushed around and bashed around. When you're very young, you know, you're very vulnerable. That's the nature of the uh, child. But then they, ha then they get taught, just like in Prahlad school of uh, Hiranyakashipu, they get taught economic development. They get taught how to actually attack people. They get taught how to do this. That's what the demons teach. So this is Kali Yuga, the darkest Kali Yuga. So this is what the educational system is actually teaching, ultimately. And our parents probably taught the same thing. So it goes very, 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 very deep to actually cut with that naimitic dharma, that temporary dharma. Ivi chitra tahina hale nirvishesh hoi kala samutalya seha aprakrita hoi The Mayavadi thinks Sri Krishna to be subject to the limitations of time such as birth and death and considers that he is not transcendental. Mm. Thus he rejects Sri Bhagavan's vichitrata, astonishing characteristics, paraphernalia, qualities and leela. Through this vicious attempt, he is left with the philosophy of Nirvishesh Brahm. Tragic. Utterly tragic. That when we get so depressed about this world and the um, perhaps um, attitude of the various people around us, our families and so on, and that we, we come to the conclusion, well, people only make me unhappy. So I'll go away alone and try to enter into the Brahman. And we have the capacity to do that. There are spiritual paths that can take us to that place. But that place is of shantaras, neutrality. And it's very warm, very loving, very bright. And you have a feeling of um, wonderfulness. You, you feel, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a euphoric feeling. But there's no relationship there. You've actually, my Gurudev described it like, um, if you take some chickpeas and you fry them in a fry pan, then they can't regrow again. If you, if you go into that place, you've annihilated, you've incinerated your, your pure ego. So it's such a day. How is that? Because you have no more desire to actually develop a relationship with Krishna. You're very happy in that neutral zone. That neutral zone means Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma na Sochati na Kanchati. No suffering, no lamentation. That's a wonderful state of consciousness to be in. No lamentation, no suffering. It sounds attractive, right? But no relationship. If there's no relationship, that's near to Vishesh. Vishesh means like dress, near means without. So without form, as opposed to Savishesh which means with form. So this is where the um, frustrated yogi will eventually run to. This is the philosophy that the Buddha taught because he came with a mission to actually stop the killing, etc., of the animals. And Sankaracharya, he taught the same thing, covered Buddhism. So, so much of India has this sanskar or impression of the impersonal path given by these glorious personalities, Lord Buddha and Sankaracharya. So it's very deeply embedded within the Indian uh, nature, psychology. But unless they've been taught about bhakti, about relationship, about devotion, their future is very um, unfortunate. That's the truth. 